You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death. But they could find no way to accomplish their purpose because all the people were hanging on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe we should focus on the the reading about the temple. And I would like to apply it to ourselves because we are temples of God. And we're living in the mix of a lot of things going on outside us, a lot of issues, struggles. Just think, let's say, the people in Valencia with the floods and all those are circumstances outside them. And each one of them is a temple of God dealing with that major, major issue. Other people are dealing with sickness. Their body is crumbling under cancer, under Alzheimer's, under Parkinson's. A family is burdened by a very sick member. The relationships are burdened because of that. There's a new stress. Uh, Work has to be done. A little baby has to be cared for. So many different pressures can be happening all on the outside. But also on the inside, lots of stuff can be going on. Just like there's turmoil in the political world, there can be turmoil inside of us, our memories, our emotions, hurt we carry, so many things going on. And yet, we are temple of God, and God lives in us. This is very precious. This uh, points to the fact that we also have a great responsibility for the temple, My temple will be a house of prayer and not a place of bad sentiments, not a place of where sadness reigns. My temple is the interior space. It's not just a space, it's my heart. It's where God dwells. The Holy Spirit lives in us as in a temple. This is wonderful that the Lord uh, wants to live in us, and that means we are also very sacred. We are sacred to the Lord. I'm sure the Lord is looking on every church of stone in the world and wood and metal and plastic and glass, all kinds of very simple churches in poor areas and very elaborate churches in other areas, and the people are proud of their place that they have for praising God, but really... God is much more attentive to each of us because we are his temple and forever will be with him in heaven. All these other buildings will go to dust. And then the care we have of what's inside us. And when people come to a church, they come for blessing. They come to be with God. So when people come into our company, they're coming to a temple of God. And so they can also expect to come with their burdens and they can expect to walk away with blessings. And it's so easy for us to have a bad attitude to somebody who comes into our space, into our temple. And maybe that person hurt us before. Maybe we're struggling in relationship of trust Maybe we actually are at fault towards that person and we are feeling guilty. And so Jesus comes into the temple to cleanse the temple today in the gospel, to drive out the stuff that's in there that shouldn't be there. And imagine that everybody who comes into this temple space that I am will walk away with a blessing, walk away in greater peace, like people do when they go to a church 
they usually can become more serene, more, more themselves, more real. Uh, they, they touch reality, they, they get out of the fog, out of the lack of clarity that's all around. And they bring their life before God. And if we are image and likeness of God, it's not a surprise that we would be able to do that. And what a different type of life is in a family where even just one of the members of the family is living that way. And what a beautiful goal in our lives, in all the mixed up baggage that's going on in us, that little by little we grow more mature. And little by little, our temple is more cleansed out by Jesus, the sacrament of reconciliation, but also our nightly act of contrition going to bed. Also our little acts of asking for forgiveness, our little acts of giving forgiveness. You know, there's that beautiful line that we pray on Wednesday evenings in the comp line, and it says, it's from the scriptures, um, may the sun not go down on our anger. So we have reason to be angry with somebody, upset with somebody. We will put all that in God's hands and our temple will be serene. We'll even get better sleep because of that. But other people will also be blessed through that. And we will be maturing step by step as a temple of God. And the word of God is very good for us in that way. The word of God is very wholesome for us, but it can cause a big crisis inside of us. It can be sweet in the mouth like it was for the author of the book of Revelation, but then it can also become sour. It can become very demanding to forgive, to not harbor bad memories, to be a blessing for somebody that only brings trouble. What a way to live. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.